A warm welcome to your midweek gardens today evening news update for Wednesday, February 16. The island's premier agricultural festival is set to make a comeback this year, but with likely changes. Organizer of the annual AgroFest Showcase, Chief Executive Officer of the Barbados Agricultural Society, James Paul, told Barbados today he and his team are currently mulling over dates to host the popular event. We are hoping, of course, that we will be going to revert back to what is normal. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, it will depend on what the state of it, um, it you know, of what is happening, how far the extent to which we have been able to control the COVID virus among the population. Mm-hmm. It will depend on those things. But in, in any case, we will have something um, that basically, you know, yes, there will be an agrofest. The, the only thing they said though is that the form will take and the, um, it will have to be, even if it is the original form, we are planning to make a few changes consistent with, you know, trying to be safe mm-hmm. and trying to protect people. Complacency around mass wearing, travel and indoor gatherings has created a perfect opportunity for the new Omicron variant to spread rapidly throughout the region and increase deaths. Yeah. That's the view of Pan American Health Association Director Dr. Caressa Etienne, who sounded the warning at PAHO's weekly press briefing. She said many countries are returning to just the way they were before. Omicron overtook us. The variants spread more quickly than others, and we are dealing with a greater volume of cases than ever before. Unfortunately, as Omicron arrived, We didn't use all the tools that we had developed to slow the spread and prevent infections for the new kind of transmission patterns that Omicron presented. Too many places in our region remained just as they were before this wave. People relaxed their precautions, traveled and gathered and met indoors, often unmasked, creating opportunities for transmission. The truth is that the reduced public health measures were insufficient to reduce the scale of this wave. Dr. Carissa Etienne revealed that more than half of the deaths in the latest surge occurred in people over the age of 65, but many others occurred among those yet to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. She says unvaccinated people of all ages still fill up hospitals and ICU beds. Many people in our region remain unprotected against COVID and have yet to receive life-saving vaccines. Unvaccinated people of all ages are still filling up our hospitals and ICU beds, and too many are succumbing to this virus. But today we have better tools to fight COVID, and countries have the experience that they need to control infections. Omicron has shown that the vaccines that we have at hand can protect most of us from severe illness and death. 14 countries and territories in our region have already immunized more than 70% of the eligible populations. We are on track to help other nations reach that mark and we must continue to strive for equitable access so that we can reach everyone. Now to the latest COVID-19 update. Barbados recorded 327 new COVID-19 cases, 147 males and 180 females from the 1,609 tests conducted by the Best of Santos Public Health Laboratory on Tuesday, February 15. The cases comprised 52 persons under the age of 18 and 275 who were 18 years and older. There were 126 people in isolation facilities, while 4,822 were in home isolation. Three people died from the viral illness on Tuesday, a 67-year-old unvaccinated woman and a 76-year-old fully vaccinated man and an 90-year-old unvaccinated woman. As at February 15th, there were 305 COVID-19 deaths recorded. One of Barbados's main attraction is entering its 35th year of operation with a commitment to preserving the country's main marine environment in a major way. 
General Manager of the Atlanta Submarine Barbados, Roseanne Myers, says that the company, which for decades has showcased the best of the country's underwater environment, will be launching a coral nursery. Our major attraction is the coral reef. And over the years, we've talked about pollution of the reef. We've talked about, um, you know, we don't have a best coast storage system, the way it impacts the reef and so on. But over the 35 years that we have been in existence, the whole concept of planting and replanting coral and growing coral and creating nurseries. And we really have to thank um, the organization Coral, um, which basically is trying to ensure that we can grow and have coral nurseries where any broken off coral can be harvested and you, you attach it to a frame and you can actually monitor it and get that coral not to die and get thrown away, but to grow. Um, Atlantis does not have um, one of those projects started, but we are about to. So we are going to establish a coral nursery with the help of Barbados Blue. And Andre Miller was a, an employee of Atlantis as well. He's gone on to do great things. And we really are looking forward to uh, Andre's assistance to set up the coral nursery and to start to re look at how we can regenerate coral. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi. I am Onika. I am a mother, I am a daughter, and I am a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental, so at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic, and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses, and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional happening, St. Lucia's Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Sharon Bellamere George, confirms the country has recorded its first pediatric death due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We get the details from HTS News Force. A dark day in the fight against COVID-19 as the virus claimed the life of the youngest victim since the start of the pandemic in St. Lucia. Children have, for the most part, been able to weather the viral disease and its symptoms, while seniors, people with underlying medical conditions and immunocompromised systems have been pillared by the deadly respiratory illness. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George on February 14th disclosed that a toddler had lost her battle with the virus. St. Lucia has recorded the first COVID-19 pediatric death. A three-year-old female child with serious underlying medical conditions from Babano was admitted at the respiratory hospital on January 27, 2022 and passed away on February 8, 2022. The Ministry of Health expresses sincere condolences to the family affected at this time. On the international front, U.S. health officials said they are preparing for the next phase of the COVID-19 pandemic as Omicron-related cases decline, including updating CDC guidance to give people a break from mask wearing. More in the support from Reuters TV. We are assessing the most important factors based on where we are in the pandemic and will soon put guidance in place that is relevant and encourages prevention measures when they are most needed to protect public health and our hospitals. We want to give people a break from things like mask wearing when these metrics are better and then have the ability to reach for them again should things worsen. If and when we update our guidance, we will communicate that clearly, and it will be based on the data and the science. That's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD. 
99.3 FM.